Everyone's talking about AI agents and AI assistants. You know, those tools that answer questions, that often are helping you write code. Some cases, they're even help pilots fly aircraft. It seems like everyone's making and building their own AI agents and AI assistants. Well, here's the twist. The U.S. government's actually spending money on these AI agents and AI assistants. By the way, Rick Howard, didn't even introduce myself, former government acquisitions officer, I managed over $82 billion in contracts for the Department of Defense. Now I run GovClose, the number one training program for government contracting professionals, meaning if you want to get into government contracting as a sales executive or you want your company to start winning government contracts, GovClose.com, check it out. So today we're talking about AI agents, AI assistants, and if you've watched the channel for a while, you know how important it is to understand federal spending. This is the big advantage we have. All of the data is public, so we can take a look at it if we know where to find it and then reverse engineer our path to success. The problem is most people don't know where to find it. So let's take a look at what the numbers actually say. First, we're going to look at the Department of Education, which is putting together a proof of concept called Aiden. Now, this is a chat bot that is helping people navigate the complicated student loan process. This is a proof of concept. So this is the type of example that you want to look at if you're developing these type of solutions and want to get in front of the government. And by the way, if you want to see and identify these contracts, you want to go to USA Spending. It's a free government site. I have a ton of training in our channel. You can go here and hopefully I put the actual playlist there, which will give you a ton of training on how to use USA Spending and do federal analytics. Now, here's the catch. When the Department of Education put this on contract, they didn't just put it out on SAM.gov. You couldn't just bid on it. This was awarded through a contract vehicle, which means you have to be on that contract vehicle already in order to go on contract for something like this. So we have to understand how the government actually buys the type of thing we're trying to sell. So in this case, we would have to either subcontract to a prime that was already on that contract or wait for a onboarding opportunity. Again, we've done plenty of training on contract vehicles, which you can check out in the playlist. Now, as a veteran, I always wonder, hey, what's the VA doing, right? So for those service disabled veteran owned small businesses out there, fellow veterans, the VA buys a lot from SDVOSBs, but not exclusively. And the VA has been experimenting with AI chat bots uh, for years actually now these are much smaller awards now we're looking at awards that are like 10 million dollars and less but the reason this is important is because it opens up the door for smaller companies to get in and try things out so while the commercial world obsesses over these huge ai launches the VA quietly works with the small and mid-sized businesses. So this is where you could get your foot in the door. If you have anything that could potentially automate veterans' claims or work with them to navigate the somewhat complicated disability websites that the VA has, I'm not saying I have experience with that, but I do, you may be in line to work with the VA. Now, where do you go if you want to work with the VA? I would start with SAM.gov. And... You don't want to look for a RFP or RFQ. What I would advise you is look for a sources sought. That's going to take you out of the solicitation phase and put you squarely in the market research phase. You want to find the opportunity as early as possible, develop a relationship with the office, see if your solution fits so you don't have to waste your time writing a proposal that you're not going to win down the line. Now, the Navy has a GPT that they're potentially going to launch across the service. So I just want to point that out for you. If you are looking for either opportunities in SAM.gov or you're looking at past federal spending, play around with the keywords and see what you get back. So if the Navy is looking at potentially using an AI tool for everyday office work as a former Air Force officer, I wonder, hey, what's the Air Force actually looking at AI for? Well, DARPA and the U.S. Air Force have been already experimenting with AI. In fact, this probably will not surprise you, but they're using AI in flight tests. Autonomous AI agents have already flown the X-62A Vista fighter jet in simulated dogfights against humans and won. Now, what's the implication here? Well, the implication potentially could be that AI agents aren't just going to 
live on your home screen of your computer. But in this case, they could be in the cockpit actually flying aircraft for the Air Force. Now, we know that, you know, drones to a certain extent remove, not to a certain extent, drones do remove the human from the cockpit, or the, but they don't remove the human from the loop. You know, there's always a human controlling the drone. Now, there are some automated tools in case they lose connectivity and whatnot, but this is really interesting having AI actually fly the aircraft. Realistically, though, I think the near term is going to show AI agents supporting pilots, not replacing them, probably analyzing threats, uh, providing recommendations, uh, making it easier for the pilot to concentrate on what he's supposed to be doing, which is flying the plane instead of a lot of the paperwork and various other things that are taking place in a aircraft. So while you hear AI agent and think Siri or chat GPT, the Pentagon hears AI agent and thinks battlefield autonomy. Now you want to look for those contracts under NAICS codes like 541715. Now those aren't exclusive to AI. In fact, there, to my knowledge, there is no AI code. I'll double check that before I publish this. But often when we see a new technology, you're going to see those new technologies fall under a variety of different codes. By the way, when I say NAICS code, it's N-A-I-C-S. That stands for North American Industry Classification. It's a, a code which represents usually an industry like IT or construction. In a product service code or a PSC code, that's a code that usually represents a more concentrated or focused subset of a NAICS code. When we see a contract, we usually see it have a NAICS code or a category and a product service code as well. Now, if you're serious about selling your AI agent to the government or selling to the government in general, you have to understand the vernacular, you have to understand how the government buys and the terminology and how to do the research, right? So that's what we teach at GovClose. We walk you from very beginning 101 all the way through the most technical federal data analytics. And it's the reason that our over 200 GovClosers, maybe I'll call them in this video, it's, it's the reason they're so successful. It's because they understand how the government buys. And so when they walk in to help a company, they walk into an interview and they're getting hired, or they themselves have a company and they're selling, they know who they're selling to, how the government buys what they sell, and they also know how to develop relationships and walk a opportunity all the way from identification to closed contract. And that's where the work begins when you go on contract with the government. Subscribe here on YouTube for more stories and check out govclose.com to get started. Because the government isn't waiting on AI assistance and agents, and neither should you.